This video is going to look at the point slope form of an equation. And before I look at that, I want to go back and talk about our slope formula that we had where m is your slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, where x1, y1 is a point on the line and x2, y2 is another point on the line. Recall we said that here your slope is simply the change in your y divided by the change in your x. Well, I want to look at what happens if we solve this equation differently. In other words, here it's solved for m. What happens if we take, here we have the denominator x2 minus x1. What happens if we multiply both sides of this equation by the denominator x2 minus x1? Well, on the right-hand side, that's going to cancel out. And on the left, we're going to end up with m multiplied by x2 minus x1 equals y2 minus y1. Now, keep in mind the only thing that the sub numbers here, uh, sub 2 and sub 1, is just telling us that we have the point x1, y1, x2, and y2. If I was to drop out the x2 and y2 and just leave that as x, then notice here we have m times x minus x1 equals y minus y1. And if you notice, if we switch the order around and put the y first, we have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So all we did was rearrange our formula up here for slope and rewrite it this way here in terms of y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And this here is simply what we call your point slope form. So it's really not a new equation. It is simply a way to rewrite our formula over here for finding the slope. And in this point slope form, of course, m is representing slope. And your x1, y1 is simply, simply representing a point on the line. So here we can easily find the slope and the point. And a lot of times you would use this equation if you were given the point on a line and if you were given the slope, then we could simply find the equation for the line. So for an example, if you were given, let's say that we were given the point, let's say 2, negative 3, and we know that this is a point on our line, and we know that the slope happens to be, let's say, 2 thirds. How can we find the equation of the line that contains this point and this slope? Now, we could pick any point on the line, but they give us the point 2, negative 3, so here we are given a point and here we're given the slope. So if we're trying to find the equation, hence the name up here above, we have the point slope form. So the equation tells us that if we take y minus y1, that's equal to the slope times x minus x1. So our point here, 2, negative 3, that's our x sub 1, y sub 1, and of course 2 thirds is the slope. So all we have to do is substitute in the numbers for x1, y1, and m. So we would have y minus a negative 3. So I'm going to write this y minus negative 3 equals our slope, which is 2 thirds, times x minus x1, which is 2. And then y minus a negative 3, we could simply write that as y plus 3 equals 2 thirds times x minus 2. And at this point, we have the equation of our line that contains the point 2, negative 3 with a slope of 2 thirds. So this is the equation, and this equation is in what we call point slope form. Now, we could rearrange the equation and solve this equation for y. So now, if we're going to solve for y, then we, that means we need to get rid of the 3. So we would have y plus 3 equals, and before we get rid of the 3, I guess over here we should distribute the 2 thirds. So we would have 2 thirds x 
minus two thirds times a negative two would be a negative four thirds. And now we can get rid of the three, subtract the three from both sides. So we would have two thirds x minus four thirds minus three. And now in order to subtract, we need to have a common denominator. So we would have y equals two thirds x. And if we have a negative four thirds and we want to take away three, then a common denominator would be three. So that means three times three is nine. So we have a negative four thirds minus nine thirds. So that's going to be equal to a negative four minus nine would be a negative 13 thirds. So then down here we have minus 13 thirds. So all we did was solve the equation for y. So this is still the equation for the line that contains the point 2, negative 3 that has a slope of 2 thirds. And if you notice here, you may be familiar with this, this is, leads us into another form. And this is called slope intercept form. And what we're going to notice is the two thirds here is representing our slope, and the negative 13 thirds is representing our y intercept. Okay, so clearly the two thirds is our slope. And remember the y intercept here, the y intercept is where the graph crosses the y axis. So basically what that says is our x is 0 and our y coordinate is a negative 13 thirds. And we'll talk a little bit more about this form later uh, in the next video. Uh, but the form here for the slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. And again, here you have m is your slope and b is the y intercept. So over here, this is our 0 comma b. That's the y intercept. Now the next video will go into a little bit more, more detail about this slope intercept form. Now what I do want to point out is you see the connection now between this slope formula and point slope. Well I want to look at this point slope and hopefully you can kind of see the connection here with point slope and this slope intercept form. All we did was solve the equation for y. So slope intercept form is a particular form of point slope when we know that our point is the y-intercept, which means the x-coordinate is going to be equal to 0. So if you notice, the given point we had up here was 2, negative 3. Well, what happens if we're given, let's say we have our slope is, let's say, 1 half and we're given the point, let's say, 0, 2. Okay. Now, let's say that we want to find the equation. Well, we know that we have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So if we plug in, we have y minus y1, which is 2, equals our slope of 1 half times x minus x1, which is 0. And this is going to be an important connection to make here. Notice the x1 happens to be 0. So that means we have y minus 2 equals simply 1 half x. Now, if we, now again, this here is your point slope form, but if we continue to solve this equation for y, notice what happens now. We have y equals 1 half x add the 2 over, we get plus 2. Now, this is that slope intercept form I was talking about. And if we can clearly look here, this is this y equals mx plus b. So that means here m is equal to 1 half. And our b value is equal to 2. So that's given us 0 comma 2. So what that tells us is, 
the 2 is where we cross the y-axis. And of course, if that's where we cross the y-axis, then our x value has to be 0. So kind of looking at this graphically, we know that we have a point at 0, 2. And then we know the slope is 1 half. Now, if we wanted to at this point, we could actually find another point because if the slope is a half, what does that mean? Well, that says that we're going to go what? Up one unit and then two units to the right. So if we go up one and then to the right two, that gives us another point here. So then we would end up with our straight line. So by doing so, we found this other point to be located at what? If we go up one, and then over 2, this is going to be located at 2 and negative 1. And we could keep doing that. We could continue to go up, uh, I'm sorry, 1 unit. We go up 1 unit and then to the right 2. And we could keep doing that with our slope. We could keep going the rise up 1 and then over 2. Now, the, uh, to get back with the connection I wanted to make here is that y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Notice here in this equation what happened to the x1. Because that's a 0, it disappears. And really all we have is y minus 2 equals 1 half x. So if we add it over, we get y equals 1 half x plus 2. Well, that leads us into this shortcut if this is your slope and this is your y-intercept, when we know this 0, 2 is your y-intercept because the x is 0, then we could simply use y equals mx plus b and plug in the slope, which is 1 half. So that's 1 half x. And remember, our b value is the y-intercept. Well, we know the y-intercept because it's 0, 2. So we simply plug 2 in for b. And we have y equals 1 half x plus 2. So that's a little bit quicker way to find the equation as long as we know this y-intercept. So for example, uh, to look at this point slope form again, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. If I give us the slope m and we have the point 0 b okay then if we plug in the point 0 b up here we have y minus y1 well the y1 is our b so that's y minus b equals m which is the slope x minus x1 well the x1 here is 0 so notice what happens. We have y minus b equals, distribute the m, m times x, and then of course m times 0 is 0. And if we move the b over, add b to both sides, we get y equals mx plus b. So if you have the point to be the y-intercept and the slope, then we could simply use this slope-intercept form. Now, you can always use y equals mx plus b, and we'll look in the next video. But for this one, I wanted you to see the connection here with the slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and how if we rearrange this, we get what's called the point slope form, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And how we can use the point slope formula to find the equation of a line if we're given any point and the slope of that line, we simply plug in for x1, y1, and m, and we have the equation. Then we can solve the equation for y, and that puts the equation in what we call slope-intercept form. Okay, that's y equals mx plus b. And the next video, we're going to go into a little bit more detail of this slope-intercept form, how we can use that equation, and also uh, we'll discuss a little bit more dealing with the point slope form.